Uh, wow, what a week uh, it has been, but I just give our glory and honor to God. Uh, you know, we just had some things that um, we had to get done this week. I had to get some things done. <laughs> I was, uh, I've been invited to do praise and worship for um, a church's Women's Day, so, uh, a video. <laughs> that was a lot y'all but it was awesome and i just thank god for just the um what god has given to me what's uh, available uh in my hands to do uh so i was able to record the music record the videos edit the music edit the videos and uh so what an experience that was but i got it done on time um just coming up for some air my body's tired but my spirit is alive and ready to pray and to seek god I just want to encourage you uh, to see what it is that God has already given to you. A lot of times we're asking God for things that he's already given to us. And so it took the woman uh, who was in debt and she came to the prophet Elijah and she said, you know, I'm in debt. They're about to take my sons. What should I do? And he asked her, what's in your house? You know, what is already at your uh, disposal? And so a lot of times we can't see it. You know, she didn't see it either. Uh, she was like, I don't have anything except for a cruise of oil. And so the prophet helped her to see that what she already had was valuable. And once she began to utilize uh, that thing that God had given to her, uh, then it began to increase. And so uh, we're waiting for the increase before we do anything. That's not how it works. And so I just want to encourage you that you have to begin to see it see its value and begin to pour like that woman did you know for some of you you know you want to go back to school well you're going to have to go and maybe you have to retake the sat exams or the act exams but you can do it i did it you know i went back at the age of 48 years old to go to school and i did a bachelor's a master's and a doctorate so if i can do it you can do it too um you know but i didn't know that i could do it until i actually started you know taking the classes and going and then god began to bless it i mean every uh when i graduated with my bachelor's i graduated with a 3.9 when I graduated with my master's, I graduated with a 3.9. When I graduated with my doctor's, I graduated with a 4.0. So, you know, you can do it. I didn't, listen, if somebody had told me that I could have done that at the age of 18, I would have never believed them. But because of God, uh, his uh, supernatural working on my natural, I was able to do it in his strength. And um, you have something that you could do. You have something at your disposal. Don't despise it. 
we have uh, just so many opportunities today that, uh, you know, we didn't have, most of us who's over the age of 40 or 50, we didn't have the opportunity of advertising our abilities uh, through uh, these apps that we now have access to. We have the World Wide Web. Uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, advertise your business all over the world. So I just want to encourage you today to look at what's in your hand. What already do you have? Do you make cakes? You know, I do you need to go take a class and learn how to become better at it? Uh, you know, do you read books? Uh, can you write? You know, I mean, there's just so much uh, that um, you can accomplish. And, uh, and so instead of sitting there worrying and fretting, I want to encourage you to allow the spirit of the Lord to show you what it is that you already have. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking that over you today. I'm proclaiming over you that you will see what is in, <coughs> excuse me, what is in, already in your hands, that's already in your house, that's already in your disposal. I mean, what can you accomplish? And don't despise it. It could be something that seems so insignificant, but when God's supernatural touch with it, it can become a multi-billion dollar business. And um, God can do that in you. And so uh, don't always look outside of you or outside of your house or outside of uh, your own abilities uh, to, to get the help that you need. God is providing that help for, for you. He's already provided. There's the, we sing that song all the time. Uh, you know, God has already provided. He's already given it to us. And uh, many times when he answers us, he gives it to us in seed form. You know, we're asking for a chair, but God gives us the wood so that we can build it. You know, uh, whatever dreams and, and everything that you're having, God has already given you the seed. So I'm just praying that the vision, the wisdom, the insight would be uh, released to you. You know, get into your quiet space and allow the creative God that's inside of you begin to unlock uh, you know, the uh, potential that's already there. You have to be quiet. You have to get in the presence of God and you have to begin to seek God because God has created you with a purpose. And it says to us in Jeremiah, for I know the plans that I have for you. What God has for you are plans uh, for you to succeed for you to prosper, for you to accomplish. You know why? Because that's his nature. He is a God that succeeds. He's a God that uh, strategizes and he's able to conquer and overcome. You know, the Bible tells us that before the foundations of the world, that Christ died for us. So even when uh, that whole fiasco in the Garden of Eden took place, God was not sitting there wringing his hands and, you know, say, oh, what am I going to do? All oh, these people are just so, you know, hard headed. They just messed everything up. No, he already had a plan. He already had a strategy for what needed to occur to get us out of that situation even before we got into it. So, you know, that's the kind of God that we serve. And it is in his nature. Victory is in the nature of God. We do not deserve, we do not serve a defeated God. We serve a God that is the God of war, that he is able to conquer. He is able to overcome. And he teaches our hands to war. <laughs> he teaches us how to fight and how to play and how to strategize and overcome whatever situations uh, that we're facing. God has an answer and a solution for everything. 
you know, I, I didn't even plan on talking about this today, but <clears throat> this is hot off the press, y'all. Uh, and, and just something that uh, I really think that uh, God wants you to hear today. So I'm praying that your hands will be strong. What does it mean to have strong hands? It means that when you pick up that thing, whether it is um, a pen, or whether it is a, uh, a a cake spatula, you know, or whatever it is, that it begins to come together like a basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Come on, it turns into something wonderful and fantastic, uh, you know, in their hands. Uh, so God is giving that to you. Use it. It may not be uh, all great and wonderful the first time you produce something, but produce it. Make sure that it goes from being um, a plan or an idea to it actually coming into fruition. Uh, you know, I used to knit, um, I make sweaters, and I uh, had my own store on Etsy and was selling sweaters and hand knitting them uh, to women all over the world. And uh, it, it was awesome. I, I, I stopped when I started working on my doctorate because it was just too much. But let me tell you, when you get those instructions, uh, you know, you have to be able to, to see uh that thing or that and, and most times a picture comes along with it so you can see what the final product would be you know if you don't have a picture go find something that's similar to the what you uh the idea that you have and begin to post it up or put it on your laptop and you know put it somewhere so that you can see it you know but make sure that you have a plan write it out try to write it out as best as you can and then begin to follow those steps begin to activate it put that plan into action and watch what god is going to do we know the story of the little boy with the fish and the loaves of bread uh, thousands of people had come to hear Jesus speak and uh, he didn't want to send them away because they had come out into you know the wilderness to hear him and they had walked for miles and miles to hear him and he didn't want to send them back hungry you know thinking that they would you know be famished and and fall faint because of it and so he asked the disciples what do we have and they said, well, we don't have anything, but this little boy has fish and loaves of bread. And so Jesus blessed it, you know? And I think that that is key, that they were able to offer these fish and these loaves of bread, you know, to Jesus. And the scripture says that Jesus blessed it and he broke it, you know, and began to uh, serve the people. And so those fish, few fish, and those loaves of bread uh, began to multiply as it was continued to be broken off and served. And that is really the key. If you can get that, then I guarantee you that you will begin to minister to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people just for something that is small, that it seems insignificant, that only seems like it's just enough for one person, you know, uh, but allowing God to bless it and allow God to break it. And so whatever it is, just give it back to God. Say, God, you know, God, I need for you to bless this, you know, and spending the time with God uh, for him to do it. I promise you that you have not been waiting on God, that God has been waiting on you to see it. Come on and see it and get busy doing it. Glory to God. So I just want to continue to... Uh, remind you of just God's favor uh, that is upon your life. And if you don't think that you have favor, then just ask for it, you know, uh, and don't worry about 
uh, how it's going to come and what is God is going to do. Allow God to be God and you be you. You know, do your part and whatever you can do. Uh, and then God will certainly be in the midst of that and will do exceeding abundantly above that. You know, and, and it will uh, come to pass. Just producing something uh, to the glory and honor of God is exciting. It's absolutely exciting. Something that did not exist before. And because of uh, you, you know, because of what you're doing, it now is uh, seen. You know, and that's what God is all about. He's, he's about manifestation. Our God is about manifestation, something that did not exist, and now it does exist. And the faith of God is exactly that. The faith of God says that I believe that something that does not exist, at least not uh, in my vision, you know, that once I began to apply my faith and some works to it, that it then uh, becomes something, it comes into manifestation, something that people can see, something that people can partake of or enjoy, uh, you know, whether it's singing or acting or dancing and, you know, all of that. I was uh, planning a women's event uh, for our uh, church. Uh, this was maybe about, uh, maybe I guess about 10 years ago now. And we were having a women's meeting and we had gone to see, uh, Tyler Perry did a movie from the book, um, uh, it's, it's Casey right now, but I, I'll think of it. And so we had gone to see it. Many of you already know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, the colors and the ladies that had gone through, each of them had gone through uh, situations and circumstances uh, that challenged their lives. And uh, so we all, you know, encouraged all the women to go watch the movie. And then our women's meeting was based upon that. Well, uh, in the process of planning, uh, we had a team of people that were advertising. So our church is located near a metro station where, you know, thousands of people every single day are going in and out of there. So it was my turn to go uh, to the metro and hand out flyers, uh, letting uh, the uh, women know, hey, we're having this um, powerful uh, women's meeting, you know, if you're going to see the play, I mean, the movie, come join us for Color Girls. Yes, I knew I would get it. Uh, and uh, so it just encouraged that if you see it, come join us. We're going to be talking about it, sharing thoughts and ideas. So, okay, so I go out there and it's cold. Okay, it's almost, it's winter time. So it was like maybe around uh, October or November, like it is now, almost, uh, but a lot cold. It's not cold yet. And uh, so I get out there and I hand out a few flyers. And while I was standing there, I see this woman who is so high um, that she, she didn't even know where she was. She could barely walk. And so at the metro station, there's like this overpass uh, for the trains that's coming into the station. And then, you know, a two-way two street where you could just walk across the street and walk over to the parking lot. So she was standing on the other side of, of the street, the side that the metro station is on. And I was standing on the side where the parking lot is. And so I see her walking towards me and I hear the spirit of the Lord say, help her no i had just gotten out there and i was like help her you know god you know i'll come out here i mean i went through a lot to get ready to you know come out there i'm standing out there in the cold and hand these flyers out and the lord said no i want you to help her and so uh i was like i don't, I don't even know what to do i mean she could barely walk she she was not on this planet <laughs> that's how high she was so of course she walks across the street right near me and she sits down on 
um, uh, the curb near where I was standing. And, um, you know, she was out of it, but she was dressed uh, well, she had a purse. And so I saw, you know, I waited a few seconds, I turned around to see what was going on. And it was obvious that if I didn't help her, someone was gonna take advantage of her. Uh, so I, I walked over to her and I said, you know, are you okay? I know dumb question, I get this dumb question. And so I was like, um, you know, how, you know, how can I help you? And I was like, you know, where do you live? Where you're going? And so she, you know, did say to me that she was trying to get home, but she could not tell me where she lived. That's I mean, she she couldn't uh, remain uh, coherent enough to tell me where she lived. And so our church is right down the street and my car was parked at the church. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll take you home. And, you know, if you can remember, so I helped her get up. And it's, uh, the church is about two blocks, a good, good two blocks from the metro station. So we get, we're walking through the parking lot and uh, it became obvious that she was not going to make that journey. So I set her on the sidewalk at the back end of the parking lot. And I was like, don't move. Cause there was no way that we were going to make the rest of that trip. Cause I had already basically was carrying her almost uh, to get as far as we did. And so I, I sat her there and I was like, don't move. And I was praying. So I ran to go get my car. Um, I came back and I was like, Lord, please don't let nobody um, harm this woman while I'm going. So she, I got back, she was safe. I was able to get her <clears throat> into my car. And now I'm driving and I have no idea <laughs> where am I going. I don't know what's going to happen when this woman comes. You know, if she comes to, back to reality, is she going to think I'm a kidnapper? I mean, all these kind of thoughts are running through my mind. And um, so I'm driving and I hear that her cell phone is ringing. And I was like, okay, thank God. So I'm saying to her, ma'am, I'm going to go into your purse. I'm going to get your cell phone. And, you know, because she couldn't, still couldn't tell me where she lived or whatever she was saying. It was not enough for me to, you know, fully comprehend it. And so I, I was able to go into her purse, get the phone. And I said to the gentleman that was on the other line, I was like, hi, you know, I saw your friend. He told me her name. Um, I'll, I'll just call it Jenny for now. And I said, I, I'm with Jenny. Jenny is not doing well. Um, uh, she's, you know, really out of it. Can you tell me her address so I can take her home? And she was actually just coming uh, from the clinic. And I, I think they give out the methadone and she had it in her hand. And I think that she was trying to communicate to me that she needed to take that. And, um, but I, 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 you know, it was just too much. I, I didn't understand at the time. I didn't understand it. And uh, so I was able to uh, get the address. And so by this time it's, it's dark. And uh, so I, I find her address, I get there. Uh, and um, the row houses in, D in DC, uh, some of them are like up on a hill and they were like, numerous steps, probably like a good 40 steps to go to get to, you know, the um, the porch of her home. And I was like, oh God. So I was able to get her out the car and just somehow, you know, just get her up all those stairs. I don't know what happened to the gentleman on the other line, but he was in the house, but he wouldn't come outside. And um, so I was able to get her on uh, you know, get on a porch, get, you know, ring the doorbell. Uh, they came to the door, open the door, and she was able, you know, to get in the house. So I'm driving home after all of that. I am wore out. <laughs> I'm driving home and I was like, God, what was that all about? And, uh, you know, because there was no ministry, you know, I mean, it wasn't like I uh, <clears throat> asked her to receive Christ. I couldn't because she was so out of it. And so, you know, the Lord said to me, you know, I just want you to know how much I care about my children, you know, and God cared for this woman 
even in the state and the condition that she's in. And a lot of times we think that God only cares about good people, but that is not true. And so regardless to your condition, the state that you in, God cares about you. And he encourages the people of God and those that, that can hear, you know, to care for others. And God just wanted to make sure that his daughter got home safely. And since I was there, God was able to use me to, to do that. And I have not seen that woman since then. I pray that she's okay. But it taught me something about the love of God and really just about ministry. You know, I'm, I'm inviting women to come out to this thing. And now here's this woman that really needs help, that really has some situations and circumstances uh, that were uh, insurmountable. They were great situation. So I have no idea what led her to that place, but God wanted to make sure that she got home safely. So glory to God. I mean, sometimes we think that God does not care about us, but that's not true. He cares very much about us. And, uh, you know, he's right there and he's loving and he's kind and, uh, and, and, and all of that. And so that to tell you that we had one of the most powerful women's meetings ever is an understatement. We that meeting was so powerful. We had women to come from everywhere. The room was packed and we did not get out of there until two o'clock in the morning just from people uh, sharing and uh, being set free from issues and people confess all kinds of things, you know, uh, simply because of uh, just God's love and wanting people to be set free. And so I just want you to know that if you're dealing with anything uh, that it may not be as dramatic uh, as uh, that what that woman was dealing with on that day, but if it is, or if it's worse, then I just want you to know how much God loves you and how concerned he is about you and that he is intimately aware of what it is that you're facing, uh, uh, how you got there, and God cares. If it concerns you, then it concerns God. 